a battle that took place about a thousand years ago uh, is the reason about one billion people uh, in the world today speak some form of the English language, uh, and that was called the Battle of Hastings. Uh, it produced some really colorful characters like William the Conqueror, Harold Godwinson, Errol the Confessor, uh, took place in England down here along the southern coast and produced a piece of art that we'll talk about known as the Bayou Tapestry. So before we get into the battle, it's important to know uh, about three uh, different groups. The first is the Angles, the second, the Saxons, and the third, the Normans. The first two might look uh, familiar, the Angles and the Saxons. Both of these um, are groups of Germanic peoples, people uh, that used to inhabit uh, present-day England before the Norman invasion. The Angles uh, were located here around northwest Germany, um, and the Saxons kind of just above them, uh, northern Germany and Denmark. These are two groups of people that, following the collapse of Rome in 476 Common Era, began to migrate and move down here um, into present-day Gaul. Um, and eventually, um, they made their way across the English Channel um, to present-day England, where they both met up. When the Angles and the Saxons both met up, they formed a group known as the Anglo-Saxons. Actually, the Anglo-Saxons. You maybe recognized that name before. It basically referred to any settler in the United Kingdom um, that was non-Celtic. So the Anglo-Saxons become the dominant group uh, that inhabits present-day Great Britain. So the Normans were a different group. The Normans were um, a Scandinavian group. When we talk about Scandinavia today, we're talking about countries uh, like Norway, uh, Sweden, and Denmark as well. So uh, the Normans were used to settle up here, and around the year 800 CE, they moved down south into then Gaul, um, occupied by the Franks at the time, kicked them out and established um, their, their area, which became known as Normandy, um, a name that they took, Normans. And actually, if you look at it, um, Norman um, is another term, basically, it means Northman, someone who comes from the north. This was another term um, for Vikings, more or less. So the Anglos, we have the Saxons, and we have the Normans. The Anglos and the Saxons are occupying this part of Great Britain. They're the dominant group up here, and the Normans are south here in France. So now we have the stage set where we can talk about the battle. So how does this whole thing go down? Well, in 1066, this guy, Edward the Confessor um, is the king of the Anglo-Saxons. He gets this last name, um, Confessor, because um, he was very devout and pious in his faith. Um, he built lots of churches, uh, increased the power of the clergy in England. Um, but in 1066, this famous year, right, Edward dies. Um, and he dies without a child. So this raises some questions. Basically, who is going to be the next king of England? Sounds like an episode of Game of Thrones, right? So Edward is gone. And insert William the Conqueror. William the Conqueror, um, it's important to remember here, like, he's not English, right? He's, he's Norman. Um, he's the Duke of Normandy. And he speaks French, or something similar to French, an older style. Um, and he is occupying this part of like present-day France. He basically thinks he should become the next king um, of England, the next king of the Anglo-Saxons. Why? Because he was a cousin to Edward the Confessor, and he knew him pretty well. So he says, hey, um, I should be the next king of England. Uh, but the Anglo-Saxons have something else in mind. The Anglo-Saxons want this guy. His name is Harold Godwinson. He is not a Norman. He is an Anglo-Saxon. Um, he lives in then present-day um, England. And the Anglo-Saxons simply thought, this is more our kind of guy. He's an Anglo-Saxon. Um, he's not a foreigner like William is. Um, so therefore, we should elect him king of the Anglo-Saxons. 
And in 1066, that's what they do. This infuriates William the Conqueror, so he's going to cross the English Channel. By the way, not an easy thing to do. And he's going to take on Harold Godwinson at the Battle of, if my thing works, takes him on at the Battle of Hastings, October 4th, 10, or 14th, 1066. Now, um, William was outnumbered. Harold was having a lot of problems, though, um, especially in the north. Um, he was under attack by another group of people, so he had to fight another battle called well, the Battle of Stamford Bridge um, up here. So by the time William conquers, William the Conqueror crosses the English Channel, Harold has to run down here to meet him. Um, Harold and his forces initially are superior um, to William the Conqueror's, but at the end of the day, um, Harold is defeated. And William the Conqueror um, successfully invades and conquers England. So now there is a Norman presence in Anglo-Saxon England. This is the image we looked at earlier. Um, this was that Bayou Tapestry. Um, famous piece of art that depicts the battle. If you look at it, it's actually a pretty long piece of art. Um, eventually it shows Harold. Supposedly he was shot in the eye and killed. And, and that essentially... Um, doomed the, the Anglo-Saxons um, in Europe, so or in England. So the Anglo-Saxons are now um, not ruling England. Um, and instead, William, who speaks French, oh, well, my mouth is going now, um, becomes the king of England. Normans rule England. So then how do, what does all this have to do with the English language? Like, what are the implications? Well, basically, um, the Anglo-Saxons, again, they were a Germanic people. They spoke something that you and I wouldn't be able to recognize, called Old English. Um, it's a Germanic form of the language. Um, but the Normans spoke French. And the Normans' French began to um, blend with the Anglo-Saxon Old English, more of that Germanic language. And when you put the Norman French with the Anglo-Saxon Germanic language, you begin to get Middle English, um, the language of Chaucer. And this would become um, and evolve into um, modern English, the language that we speak today, that people in the United Kingdom speak. I say we speak, I mean like, you know, most kids in my class. But, you know, basically, it becomes the language that most people would speak in the world. And it had profound implications, right? So had that one day, October 14th, 1066, had it been different, who knows what language we would be speaking today. This also set the stage um, for the birth of modern England. Um, no longer was England ruled by Germanic people, but ruled by the Normans, who again blended and adopted um, some of their customs, merged it with their own, and then um, we begin to see the birth of modern England all on that famous day in October 1066, Hastings.